the game is afoot. Not a word. Into your clothes and come. I'll wait for you in the sitting room. I've just received a note from Inspector Lestrade, a letter from the suburbs. He is in need of my presence. Whenever he has asked for my assistance, it has always turned out to be entirely justified. I fancy that every one of his cases has found its way into your collection. Uh, yes, they all seem worthy of... However, I regret your fatal habit of looking at everything from the point of view of a story instead of a scientific exercise. Oh, Holmes, you... I beg your pardon, I digress. It would be much better to examine this letter than to try to convince you. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. I can tell from Lestrade's handwriting that he was in a hurry when he wrote this letter. A wax seal with the monogram E.B. A wax... A whack. The Brackenstall family coat of arms. So, what is it, Holmes? Promising, as always. It appears to be a case of murder. So you believe that Sir Eustace is dead? I should say so. Lestrade wouldn't have sent for me for less. His writing shows considerable agitation, and he is not an emotional man. These people belong to high society. The quality of the writing paper, the E.B. monogram, their coat of arms. The crime was committed before midnight. Holmes, how can you possibly tell? Well, it is all thanks to Lestrade. He wrote his letter at 3.30 in the morning. Imagine the chain of events before that. The local police had to be called in. Scotland Yard was notified. Lestrade himself had to make haste there and finally compose the letter he sent to me. All of that makes for a fair night's work. It makes sense. Lestrade also speaks of the woman he released. That seems to indicate that she had been held somewhere during the crime. Much time has been wasted. Let us find a cab and go to Abbey Grange immediately. I live in hope of an interesting morning.
Ah, oh, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, here you are. I'm very glad that you have come, but perhaps I should not have troubled you after all. And why is that? Lady Brackenstall has come to her senses, and she has given so clear an account of the affair that there is not much left for us to do. You remember that Lewisham gang of burglars? What, the three Randalls? Exactly. The father and two sons. It's their work. They stole a silver service, which is of great value. Sir Eustace Brackenstall is dead, then? Yes. His head was knocked in with his own poker. A violent act of aggression. Yes, the poor lady. She has had a most dreadful experience. She was assaulted and tied to a chair. But I think that you would best see her and hear her account of the facts. She is in the morning room with her maid, Theresa Wright. Where is the body of the deceased? In the dining room. We haven't touched anything. All right. I'm going to examine it. Very good, Watson. Lord Ramsay Brackenstall. Lord Brigham Brackenstall. Sir Wartham Brackenstall. Lord George Brackenstall. Ladies, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting Inspector Lestrade in this investigation. Mr. Holmes, I am the wife of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. We were married only a year ago. I am sorry for your loss. Please accept my deepest condolences. I suppose that it is no use my attempting to conceal that our marriage has not been a happy one. I fear that all would tell you that, even if I were to attempt to deny it. Can you describe to me the events of yesterday evening? Is it really necessary? I have already told Inspector Lestrade all that happened. Yes, madam, it is. I will tell you then. Sir Eustace retired about half past ten. I sat in this room until after eleven, absorbed in a book. Before I went upstairs, I entered the dining room to fetch a candle and... Oh, God. Please, go on. As I approached the French window... I found myself face to face with an elderly, broad-shouldered man who had just stepped into the room. Close behind the first man, I saw two others. One of them struck me a savage blow with his fist and felled me unconscious to the ground. And then? When I came to myself, I found that they had secured me tightly to a dining room chair. It was at that instant my unfortunate husband entered the room. He fought with the intruders? Yes, I think he had heard them for he was holding his stick. But they were three, and he eventually succumbed. One of them, the elder one, struck him a terrible blow with the poker. I fainted once more. When I opened my eyes, they had withdrawn. Then my brave Teresa came to my assistance. Did these three villains steal anything? Yes. I found that they had taken the silver from the sideboard. But you can see for yourself in the dining room. You mentioned that your marriage was not a happy one. Was there anything specific that was troubling you? He was not a nice man when he was drunk. 
And he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. The bruises on your hands are at least one week old. Your husband caused those bruises? Oh, do you... Yes, he did. He was very angry at the time. Out of control. Again. Sir Eustace was a drunkard. To be tied to such a man for life is worse than death. Your ladyship? Teresa, I would like to hear your testimony. Certainly, sir. As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate. But I thought nothing of it at the time. Oh, if I'd known... And then? I went to bed, and it was more than an hour after that I heard my mistress scream. And down I ran, to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. Trapper's Hut. This photograph of Lady Brackenstall and her maid Teresa was taken at a port, but which one? So the lady and her maid came from Australia a year and a half ago on this ship. Hmm. These scratches are most definitely... Hmm. 
These scratches are most definitely made by the picture frame. This is Sir Eustace's safe. There may be something important inside. I must ask Lady Brackenstall to open it. Lady Brackenstall, could you open this wall safe? No. It is my husband's safe. I do not know the combination. We have to open it. Your ladyship? You should examine the body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. So, Watson, what have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. The head was cracked with the force of the blow. That must be the murder weapon. Quite a large stick, a formidable weapon. Barefoot, he had therefore been in bed and did not have time to fully dress. Quite a large stick, a formidable weapon. It is covered in blood. Sir Eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow. That is one possible explanation. A fur trader's cabin. A deer hunt. Sailor's knot. That's interesting. This rope was handled by the murderers. We need a scent hound to follow their trail. I will take it with me. This is the chair that Lady Brackenstall was tied to. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. This candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. An empty silverware box. It appears that the intruders have stolen the contents.
A bottle of wine is missing here. The criminals did not thoroughly ransack the house. They only took a little silverware. The death was instant. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. There is beeswing at the bottom, as if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. It is rather strange that only one of these glasses has dregs of beeswing inside it, while the other two are clear. A decanter standing next to the open bottle an inseparable pair indeed. Chateau Calon Ségur, French wine, Grand Cru. A trapper's hut. The hunting scene.
This door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently, the criminals did not venture there. that the bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. There are three glasses on the dining room table. I was wondering if... Oh, I forgot. When I came to myself the first time, each of them had a glass in his hand. They might have been a father and his two sons. They talked together in whispers, and then they left. Your ladyship? The description of the Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. Let us try to open this safe. This safe can be cracked. I only have to pay attention. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number.
antique coins, possibly of value, but they're scattered without care. It is common practice to keep one's valuables in a safe behind a painting. It should not really pose a challenge for a criminal. What a horrible thing to have happened. Sir Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behavior. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defense of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead. But a devil he was, if ever one walked the earth. We met him only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. One her with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was specially hard for her. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober, but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments he was apparently capable of anything. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. Another day he threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm, the alcohol seemed to madden him. To the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. Let us see how the rope was cut. The fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly cut. Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope.
The fibers from this cut appear to be different. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. If I cut the rope with a knife, it matches the original. Come on, Toby. We need the best nose in the British Empire on this case. Search, Toby. The intruders entered the shed for some reason when they were making off with the silverware. Brave Toby, the best nose in the British Empire. Oh! <laughs> 
The scent leads to the well. I should check it. Intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. The criminals left the house through the French window. They walked to the shed, then across to the well, before fleeing by climbing over the wall. I wonder why they chose such a winding route. This hook might be useful. Small gardening tools, nothing of great interest. This old suitcase sounds hollow. It must be empty. Bags of seed. Some empty bags were recently moved. There's something glittering at the bottom there, but how can I reach it? Silverware. This is hardly a coincidence. The Brackenstall coat of arms. It appears that we have found the stolen silverware.
We found your silverware, Lady Brackenstall. It had not been taken very far. Is that true? I am very thankful to you, Mr. Holmes. Your ladyship? We found your mistress's silverware. Oh, that's good news. You really are as clever as they say. Indeed. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. Inspector, I have recovered the stolen silverware. You are a wizard, Mr. Holmes. And where is it? In the garden well. Excuse me? Unique, isn't it? Rather absurd. What is the point of stealing silverware and then throwing it down into a well? Perhaps it was used as a temporary hiding place, or simply the thieves wanted to get rid of it. It is up to us to solve this mystery. Here it is. The shipping company, the Adelaide Southampton London Line and its address. Interesting. It must be the place where they keep the records, including the one for the crew of the Rock of Gibraltar. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard, they'll give it to you without any problems. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist.
Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? At your service, Mr. Holmes. I need a register, my young friend. If you could borrow it, there will be half a guinea for every one of you. I need the crew list of the Rock of Gibraltar in 1893 and their current employment. I'm straight on it, Mr. Holmes. Do you really think they'll find it, Holmes? My secret police is better than the Yard in many ways. Here it is, Mr. Holmes. But we can't take it back. It's too risky. Put it on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. And these are the lists of the senior officers of the Adelaide, Southampton, London Line ships. Let us find out who was in London upon November the 7th. I do not think that this sailor has any connection to the Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of the crime, and he is due to depart in two days. This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. I do not think that this sailor has any connection to... This officer is still at sea. 
therefore he cannot be involved. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. Thank <laughs> you. 